If you want to play Smash Ultimate competitively or casually, one of the first things you're going to need is a controller. The controller might seem super simple, but in competitive fighting games, the complexity even goes down to the basic essentials. In fact, some professional Smash players commission their own controllers with special designs and modifications. And even Smash has a fight box style controller now too. We're not going to go that deep. In today's video, we're going to cover what controllers are good for Smash and what control setups work for Smash. If you're looking for more tips about how to handle yourself in-game, then check out ProGuides.com. We've got courses from pros like MKLeo, a live coaching platform, and an ever-expanding library of character information. Okay, now before we get into anything else related to controls, there are two schools of controller thought we should cover first, comfort and optimization. You could find a ton of different controllers, control schemes, and even ways to hold a controller. All these different methods come from a desire for comfort, optimization, or sometimes both. They aren't always exclusive. The optimizers pick controllers and control setups that create tangible, though often slight benefits. The comfort players pick controllers based on what feels the best to them when they play. You might think it's always best to optimize because optimization is next to godliness in Smash, but comfort is just as important to performance. And there's research to back it up. A 2016 research paper found that everything from lighting to temperature to humidity could affect productivity while working. Multiple pros and experts in the gaming world say the same thing. Comfort is important. That's why you see TOs make so much heat when their venue gets too cold. Even small discomforts can throw us off. So we're going to be applying talking about optimal and comfortable paths in this video, and we encourage you to find controllers, setups, and grips that keep you feeling good. Let's start with the simplest part of the discussion first, controllers. The Switch has loads of controllers, Joy-Cons, NES controllers, Pro controllers, GameCube controllers, wireless, wired, you know, it's a lot to take in. We'll keep it simple. The best options for Ultimate are either a GameCube or a Pro controller. Comfort is pretty important, but pretty much any other controller can hurt your ability to play your best. Joy-Cons are so small that it can be hard to put in proper directional inputs, leading to SDs. They also might not be legal at some tournaments, and you can kind of just look at an NES controller to see why it's not a good fit. Yeah, a joystick is kind of necessary for Smash. There's no clear winner between the classic GameCube controller and the Cutting Edge Pro controller. The Pro controller is more ergonomic and might be slightly better for your hands. That's in no small part because it has digital triggers that activate as soon as they're pressed. That's pretty nice, but it can't compete with the sweet, sweet ASMR the GameCube controller brings to the table. In terms of comfort, if you've been playing since Melee and have always used a GameCube controller, then you might not want to change a thing. If you're newer to Smash or play with other controllers more often, then you may want to go Pro Controller because the GameCube controller is actually super weird. Since the N64, Nintendo's taken a long, long journey to figure out how to make a normal controller. In terms of input lag, the time it takes for a button click to register, the wireless Pro Controller can have less lag than a GameCube controller. However, the Pro Controller is pretty inconsistent and can sometimes have more lag. Across the board, between wireless and wired equivalents of both controllers, the input lag isn't that big of a deal and only varies by frame or two. Yes, one or two frames can make a difference, but if you chalk up losing to the input lag on your controller, we've got news for you. That's a John. Once you factor in the adapter, wires, and batteries for wireless GameCube controllers, the cost is similar too. It all comes out pretty even, so pick what makes you comfortable. Even Joy-Cons if you really want. We don't recommend it, but we won't stop you. Since Pro Controllers are a part of life, let's take a moment to talk about disconnecting them. If you own a Pro Controller, be sure to bring your wire connector to make it easy to plug into setups and to go to the Change Grip Order menu to disconnect them. Even if you don't own a Pro Controller, you should know this simple method to disconnecting every controller on a Switch. Let's say someone in the venue left their Pro Controller connected to your setup and went to the bathroom or on a long, like, coming-of-age journey through the wilderness, leaving you high and dry. Just go to the Home menu, go to System Settings, scroll down to Controllers, and sensors, then hold down the X for a second and it'll disconnect every controller synced to the machine. That lets you and your opponent reconnect and means no one has to interrupt anyone else's spiritual awakening. All right, so we've covered controllers. Now, let's get to the meat of the video, the control setup or control scheme. Lucky for us, Ultimate lets us remap the buttons on the controller, so that means we've got tons of options for control setups and tons of ways to optimize our setup. Let's run through the standard vanilla competitive setup. This setup is pretty simple and pretty common. It doesn't change any court buttons, just one of the sticks and some settings. 
First, go to the other settings and change sensitivity to high, then change your right stick from smash attack to tilt attack. Lots of players like this setup because it's a bit more optimal and really comfortable. It's more optimal because of the tilt stick, which makes the right stick launch a tilt instead of a smash. Since tilts take a lighter touch and are more difficult to execute, tilt stick helps with consistency more than smash stick does. Basically, you're most likely to miss input a smash while trying to go for a tilt than the other way around, so tilt stick is more useful. Higher sensitivity increases the window of time you have to flick your stick after pressing the attack button to get a smash attack. So, higher sensitivity makes getting smash attacks with the left stick very easy. The higher sensitivity and tilt stick combo means that, you know, you can tilt and smash attack super consistently. This setup is more comfortable for a lot of people because it doesn't mess with the classic smash setup people are just used to. No need to rework your muscle memory. Don't fix what ain't broke, right? Well, maybe not. Nothing comes that easy in Smash. A lot of people assume that you set the right stick to tilt and sensitivity to high and you're good to go, but this isn't the best setup for every character. If your character has really useful Smash attacks that they rely on, it's better to go low sensitivity and set your right stick to Smash attack. This is useful for characters like Olimar and Fox. Olimar relies on his up smash out of shield to defend himself and his forward smash to play neutral, while Fox relies on landing a run up or follow up up smash to get kills. Fox and Olimar mains like Light and Buzz both use smash stick. The low sensitivity option also helps them get tilts with the left stick since their smash attacks will be consistent. If you do use tilt attack with characters like Fox, you can use the A plus B smash attack feature to get more reliable smash attacks too. A lot of players also like to use stick jump feature, commonly called tap jump. This lets you jump by moving the left stick upward, which is super comfortable. Not only is it something older generation Smash players are familiar with, it's also super intuitive. The stick that makes your character move will also make them move up. Not to mention, it's one of the easier options to use for short hopping because the tight timing window for a short hop means you want to quickly flick the jump button. It's a lot easier to flick a joystick than a button. But the bad news is that tap jump isn't optimal. Tap jump can lead to accidentally inputting or buffering a jump. For example, you could be on a stage and want to hit someone with an up special out of shield. You move your stick too quickly and the game reads a jump. So you jump before you up special and the other player shields, waits for you to fall down and you're out of stock. If you up special right away, instead of jumping, you'd have to hit them and been safe to land. Because of that, pros like Larry Lur, Mr. E, and DeBuzz all turn tap jump off. So one common competitive setup you'll see is high sensitivity, tilt attack, and stick jump off. While we're in the other settings menu, let's talk about rumble. Rumble is pretty much a comfort decision dependent on what you like. Ultimate makes the controller rumble a lot, so lots of players turn rumble off. However, DeBuzz keeps rumble on because he feels he can react faster to the touch cue of the rumble than to visual cues. And DeBuzz might be showing off his galaxy brain in this case. Research by the City University of Hong Kong found that we react faster to tactile stimuli than to visual or auditory stimuli. That means we react quicker to feeling than to sight or sound, so quicker to a controller vibration than to the noise or image of a hit landing. So rumble might be more optimal, but the cue it sends isn't always clear since the controller rumbles a lot in Ultimate. And if it makes you really uncomfortable, then the trade-off might not be worth it. All right, we've got the advanced settings and right stick out of the way. Now let's talk remapping some actual buttons. The biggest changes we're going to make here are with the shoulder buttons. When Melee came out, the shoulder buttons were for shielding and grabbing, but you don't really need two buttons for shield, nor do you need two buttons for grab if you're using a pro controller. That makes shoulder buttons prime for remapping. One of the most useful things you can do is change one of the shoulder buttons to jump. Jumps and aerials are super useful in Smash, and the common way to input an aerial is jump with X or Y and hit the right stick. With short hops, the movement can be tough as you have to quickly tap X or Y, then run your thumb down to the right stick. Mapping a jump to a shoulder button means you can have one finger on a jump button and the thumb on the right stick for easier and potentially faster aerials. This is especially useful for tight timing windows like a raw back air. But if you map one shoulder button to special and another to jump, then you can wave bounce more easily too. Characters who benefit more from wave bouncing in turn benefit more from this control scheme. Two examples are Young Link, who can get aerial combos with his specials, or Snake, who can mix up and cover his landing by wave bouncing his specials. Which shoulder buttons you change is also up to you and what feels comfortable. The only downside to changing lots of shoulder buttons is it's harder to move your shield. 
If you hold two shield buttons at once, you can rotate your shield in any direction without dotting, rolling, or jumping. However, you can also hold the special button or, bizarrely, the side taunt to rotate your shield too. It's just a little less intuitive. Speaking of taunts, there's another arguable optimization you can make by remapping the D-pad. If you remap your D-pad to shield, then you can use the D-pad to mash out of grabs and grounding moves. This mash isn't necessarily quicker than using the stick or buttons, but it is easier and is less likely to lead to buffering and accidental input after you get loose. While that might seem like an improvement, taunts may be more important than you think. Smash is a mental game, and you can use them to rattle an opponent. We talk more about that in another video also linked in the description. We've talked about some common button maps, but if you can remap so many buttons, then you can theoretically do some crazy stuff, right? You can make all four shorter buttons specials, use the B button to shield, and use the D-pad to grab. Okay, okay, you, you can do a lot of crazy bad stuff, but there's room for crazy good stuff that works for you. For an example, let's take a look at Zachary's control setup. Zachary is one of the best players in the world and probably has one of the weirdest control setups you've ever seen in a tournament. He's mapped Y and B to jump, X to special, his left shoulder buttons to grab, his ZR to jump, his R to shield, and his D-pad to grab and jump. What? What am I even looking at? In all seriousness, Zachary's setup is a good example for how to use creative mapping for optimal and comfortable controls. First, having jump on B lines up with where other consoles like the PlayStation put their jump button, so it could be more comfortable for him. It also puts the jump button right by the right stick, which makes it easier for Zachary to get quick short hop aerials. Putting specials on X is alright because he won't need to use the right stick as much as when he's using specials anyways. Putting grab all to one side of the controller is a nice way to mentally sort where that option is. Since grab is pretty committal, that sorting might help Zachary avoid mis-inputting grab and getting hard punish. And he gets rid of his taunts because he's too pure to taunt an opponent in bracket. Now, you don't have to go wild like Zachary does, okay? But it's an option, and that's the nice thing about Ultimate. You get a ton of options for how you want to structure your controls. That leaves a lot of room for comfort, optimization, and personality. So, whether an optimizer or a comfort player or just crazy, er, I mean a creative person, we hope this guide helps you find a control setup that works for you. Now, go on and set up your L button to subscribe and your X button to notification because we can confidently say that those are the button combinations on our YouTube channel that will really get you further in bracket.